11.1, we're giving it nightshade sunglasses ink as variable material cost of 964 per unit, uh, variable labor of 863 per unit, fixed cost of 915,000 for production of 215,000 units. Selling price is 39.99 a pair, and depreciation is 465,000 bucks a year. What's our variable cost per unit? Total cost, cash break even quantity, and accounting break even quantity. So a pretty simple problem. Uh, variable cost, the equation is variable material plus variable labor. Uh, total cost or fixed cost plus variable cost. Cash break even quantity is fixed cost plus OCF over P minus V. OCF at the cash break even is zero. So fixed cost plus zero over contribution margin. Counting break even is uh, quantity is fixed cost plus OCF over P minus V, where OCF at the accounting break even is equal to depreciation. So fixed cost plus depreciation over contribution margin. So first we're going to calculate the variable cost. It's a 964 per unit of uh, material and 863 per unit of labor, or a total of $18.27 per unit for each unit that I make. Total cost are this variable cost times 215,000 units will give me my total variable cost plus my fixed cost of 915,000. I get $4,843,050 total cost. Cash break even quantity is fixed cost plus zero over contribution margin. 915,000 plus zero over selling price, 39.99 minus 18.27 variable cost or 42,127.07 units, and obviously we'll round that up if we want to for production purposes. And accounting break even quantity is 915,000 uh, fixed cost plus D, 465,000, uh, divided by contribution margin, 39.99 minus 18.27, and here I get 63,535.91, or you might say 63,536 units as my accounting break even quantity. There are your answers to problem 11.1. K2 Everywhere Corp. in problem 11.2 makes mountain climbing shoes for $35.85 a pair, variable material, and $26.45 variable labor. Shoes sell for $165 a pair. So there's your revenue number. Production is 145,000 pairs. Fixed cost 1.75 million. What are our total production costs? Marginal cost per pair, average cost. Repair and minimum acceptable sales revenues for an extra 5,000 pair one time order. Equations total cost or fixed cost plus variable cost. Uh, marginal cost per pair, same as variable cost per pair. Cost of one more pair. Some uh, pet folks refer to that as incremental cost for one more unit. Uh, average cost is total cost divided by production quantity and minimum acceptable revenue for 5,000 one time 5,000 pair orders. The marginal cost per pair times 5,000 pairs. This would have a zero um, price minus variable cost, and that's what we're looking for. We want to hit uh, price minus variable cost of zero, also known as contribution margin. So zero CM in that case. Uh, total cost are variable cost plus fixed cost. I'm going to take my variable cost, 35.85, uh, variable material plus 2645 variable labor times 145,000 pairs uh, is my total variable cost plus my fixed cost of 1750000 given right here and I get a uh, total cost of $10,783,500. My marginal cost per pair or variable cost per pair is um, 3585 variable material plus 2645 variable labor. I get a total of 6230 uh, 6230 per pair. Uh, average cost is total cost divided by total production. So 1, 10 million 783,500 divided by 145,000 pairs of production. And I get uh, $74.37 per pair as an answer. And finally, the minimum acceptable revenue for a one-time 5,000 pair order, special order. I take my variable cost per pair of 62.30 that I got up here times 5,000 pairs, and I get um, a minimum acceptable sales value of 311,500. As I said before, my variable cost would be 311,500, and my contribution margin would be zero. So 
Uh, that's the minimum acceptable sales dollar value we would take. 311500 is the answer uh, to that one. Here are your answers to problem number two. And in problem 11.3, we have Sloan Transmissions Incorporated as estimates accurate to plus or minus 15%. They feel they'd like to do some scenario analysis on their values. Uh, they want to find their best case, their base case, and their worst case. That's how we know we're doing scenario analysis. We'll have these three cases pop up. Uh, their price currently in the base case is $1,700 per unit for their product. Uh, variable cost four eighty per unit, fixed cost four point one million, and the quantity they think they can manufacture is ninety five thousand units. What is the scenario analysis? We know scenario analysis. So uh, we're going to draw up the base case first. We just gave you that, and then we're going to go with the best case and then the worst case. What's the best of all worlds and the worst of all worlds? First of all, my price uh, will go up in the best case, and my quantity will go up in the best case, and my cost will go down. So, uh, by multiplying by 1.15, I get a price of 19.55 per unit, and a quantity of 109.250. Those have both gone up 15%. My cost will go down 15%, so I'll multiply these uh, base values by 0.85. So my variable cost will go down from 480 to 408, and my fixed cost will go from 4.1 million to 3485000. There's your best case. In the worst case of all worlds, my price will go down and my quantity goes down and my cost will go up. So I would take my 1700 times 0.85 in price to get 1445 per unit and my uh, quantity will go down. So I'll take 95,000 units times 0.85 to get 80,750 units. My cost will go up. So I'll take 480 times 1.15 to get 552 per unit. And my fixed cost will also go up 15%, uh, so 4.1 million times 1.15 is 4715000. And there are your answers to problem number 11.3. In problem 11.4, we see that Sloan Transmissions is now most concerned about their price, which is 1700 bucks a unit. Variable costs are still 480 per unit, fixed cost 4.1 million. Uh, quantity 95,000 units. What is their sensitivity analysis? What would you do in a sensitivity analysis? Well, in this case, we would just change the price and hold all the other variables constant. So we list the base case values and we go with it. The only one we change is the price. That's what we're most concerned about. Plus or minus one penny. Plus or minus two pennies. Plus or minus three pennies. And we would do um, income statements and then OCFs, NPVs, payback period, discount payback period. AARPI, Profitability Index, all those tools we learned in chapter number nine. And then we finally find the uh, internal rate of return using these cash flows uh, minus the investment required to produce these units plus uh, their OCFs or cash inflows uh, divided by one plus R to the T, so discounted cash inflows uh, compared to the today's investment, the point where NPV equals zero. That's how we would do a sensitivity analysis in problem 11.4. In problem 11.5, we're given that a project costs $864,000 eight-year life. Zero salvage value. Depreciated straight line to zero. We think we can sell 71,000 units per year. Price per unit of $49 a unit. Variable cost, $33 bucks a unit. And our fixed cost are $765,000. Uh, what is the ta tax rate? Is 35% uh, required rate of return on this project is 10%. Calculate a lot of stuff, the accounting break-even quantity, the uh, degree of operating leverage and the accounting break-even quantity. Uh, note that, that's critical. What is the DOL at the accounting break-even quantity? What is the OCF and MPV for a one unit decrease in sales? And a OCF for a one unit decrease in variable cost. So here are some of your equations, fairly challenging problem. Uh, kind of break even quantity is fixed cost plus OCF over P minus V and here OCF at the accounting break even is equal to depreciation. The OCF itself is equal to EBIT plus D minus D. Uh, degree of operating leverage is one plus fixed cost over OCF or one plus fixed cost over D. So here again OCF and accounting break even quantity is equal to depreciation. Uh, the MPV is equal to uh, the investment or cash outflow plus the discounted cash inflows at a discount rate of 10%. Now let's do some calculations. So the accounting break-even quantity is 765,000. 
fixed cost plus D. So this is fixed cost, 765,000. This is D, which is uh, 864,000 divided by 8. 864,000 is the cost of the equipment, and we're going to uh, appreciate it over eight years. So the annual appreciation is 108,000. Divided by contribution margin P minus V, which is uh, selling price minus variable cost. If I do that math, I get an accounting break even quantity of 54,562.5 units. Uh, what is the degree of operating leverage at the accounting break even quantity? 1 plus fixed cost over OCF. Here, OCF is equal to D. So 1 plus <coughs> 765,000 of fixed cost divided by 108,000 of depreciation. And I get 8.0833 times. What, is that, what that means is for a small increase in sales, I get a large increase in OCF. So a 10% uh, increase in sales would give me an 80, almost an 81% increase in OCF. Um, then we need to know the, the basic OCF for this project. Uh, to get OCF, I need to calculate an income statement with the givens. So the sales are 71,000 units times 49 units, $49 a unit, 3479. Zero, zero, zero. Variable cost is 71,000 units times 33 dollars units or 2343000. Fixed are 765 and depreciation is 108,000. That's your 864,000 divided by eight years. I get an EBIT of 263,000. Tax is at 35 percent or 92,050 and I get a net income of 170,950. My OCF is then uh, EBIT plus D minus T, 263,000 uh, plus 108,000 added back because it's a non-cash expense, minus my taxes of 92,050. I get an OCF each year of 278,950, 278,950, 278,950 for eight years. Now, what is the MPV? MPV is minus the cash outflow, the 164,000 for property, plant, and equipment. Plus the cash inflow, or OCF, uh, divided by 1 plus R to the T, 1.1 to the first, 1.1 to the second, 1.1 to the third, 1.1 to the fourth, and so on. Or realize that that's an annuity, and I can plug that in for C. C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T over R. Uh, R being 0.1 and T being 8 years, I get an MPV for this base case of 624. 177 and 66 cents. 624,177.66 is my NPV. Now, what happens to that uh, NPV if I have one unit decrease in sales? Uh, I can go back up here and um, go up there and, and reduce uh, these numbers by uh, one unit and then multiply by 500 to get 500 units. So I could go up here and go 70,500 units and do these same analyses. Or I could do it incrementally. So I could do a one unit decrease in sales, then I'll multiply that by 500 later. I calculate the contribution margin after tax. So 49 minus 33 times 0.65 gives me $10.40 a unit contribution margin after tax. Uh, then I have to take that going on for eight years to calculate the MPV. So I, I uh, calculate this uh, annuity present value factor again. And that comes out to 5.3349. Uh, multiply that by the 1040, so the 1040 is going into the cash flow uh, position here, and the um, 5.3349 replaces what I've circled there, present value annuity factor. I get $55.48 per unit um, NPV impact, and then times 500 units. So my total NPV impact is negative $27,741.62 for a 500 unit decrease in sales. Uh, again, I can, like I said, I could go back here and just use the number 70500 uh, for the number of units and redo the analysis that I did a minute ago. If I have a one unit decrease in variable cost, what's the impact in OCF? Well, $1, or $1 per unit increase in variable co decrease in variable cost times 71,000 units times 0.65 after tax. So a $1 unit decrease in variable cost will increase my OCF by $46,150. Costs go down, my OCF goes up. Uh, there are your answers to problem number five. In problem 11.6, we have given that the projections in problem 11.5 are accurate to plus or minus 10%. <clears throat> Calculate the base case, best case and worst case NPVs. We're doing some scenario analysis. We have our base case that we had from the prior problem, the exact same numbers. 
uh, we're going to make a best case and we're going to make a worst case from that. And then we're going to calculate the OCF, which is ABIT plus D minus T. And we're going to calculate the NPV, which is minus the initial investment, plus the cash inflows on a discounted basis. So um, in the best case, my price goes up 10% and my uh, to 53.90 unit and my quantity goes up 10% to 78,100 units. My variable cost goes down, so I'm going to multiply the base case by 0.9 and get 29.70 per unit. And my fixed costs go down, even though they're fixed, they're also variable, they go down to 688,500. In my worst case, my price goes down 10%, so I'm going to take $49 times 0.9 to get 44.10 a unit. And my units will also go down 10% in the worst case. Uh, 71,000 times 0.9 is 63,900 units. Um, my cost will go up. So I'll take my $33 times 1.1, and I'll take my 765,000 times 1.1, because my fixed cost will also go up. From these, I build a P and L. I'm not going to go through all three of them. We do it the exact same way we did the <coughs> base case. Uh, we got uh, NPAT of 179.50 in the base case, OCF of 278.950 by taking EBIT plus D minus T. And then I can um, calculate the MPV, which I did in problem 11.5 uh, of 624.177. Now, what's the impact of all this when we, in the best case when we up the price and the, and the uh, quantity and reduce the cost? I get this income statement. I get NPAT of 710,000. 788, so my NPAT is way up above the base case. My OCF is 818.788, and my MPV is 3,504,123.55. It goes way up with a 10% uh, best case scenario. In the worst case, these things are going to go down. My net income goes way down to negative 293.202, and my OCF goes way down to one negative one eight five two oh two and my uh, corresponding MPV goes way way down to one million eight hundred fifty two thousand and thirty nine dollars and there are your answers to problem one point six in problem one point seven given uh, funding the accounting break even quantity and cash break even quantity these are very simple problems counting break even quantity how many um, units do I need to make and sell just to break even where EBIT is zero, taxes are zero, and MPAT is zero, or the number of units I need to make and sell. Fixed cost plus V over contribution margin, P minus V. And the cash break even quantity is fixed cost plus zero over P minus V. This is the number of units I need to make and sell such that OCF equals zero. <coughs> Um, so three cases, uh, given the unit price, unit variable cost, fixed cost, and depreciation, we can just plug these numbers into those two equations. I'll do one uh, sample, and um, you can follow and do the rest. So for accounting break-even, uh, in case one, I take a nine million of fixed cost plus 3.1 million of depreciation, divided by contribution margin of 2980 minus 2135, and I get 14,319.53 units. 14,320 would be the answer. And for cash break even, I take um, fixed cost of 9 million plus zero over contribution margin. So 9 million plus zero over P minus V, 2980 minus 2135, and I get an answer of 10,650.8876 units, or 10,651 units. Uh, for case two, accounting break even is 63,600 units, and cash break even is 27,000 units even. And uh, for case three, accounting break even quantity is 472 units, approximately 471.67. And cash break even is about 317 units, 316.67. And there are your answers to 11.7. In problem 11.8, we're looking for uh, the missing variable in three cases under the accounting break-even quantity case. Accounting break-even quantity equation is fixed cost plus D over P minus V. Um, you can see here that OCF is equal to depreciation. That's because at the accounting break-even quantity, EBIT is zero. Tax equals zero. And then income 
equals zero. So that's the case how many units do I need, need to make and sell to uh, get those values. So we're getting three cases. Um, and we just simply plug these numbers into the equation. Let's do case one. Uh, 97,432 units equals fixed cost of 820,000 plus X. I'm going to put in X for depreciation over contribution margin of $9, 39 minus 30. Solving for depreciation, I get 56,888. Uh, second case, I come, we're looking for unit price. So I plug in uh, right here, going left to right, top to bottom, 165,000 units equals fixed cost 2745000 plus depreciation of 1150000 over X minus 27 for variable cost. I get um, a unit price of $50.61 per unit. And in the third case, I'm looking for unit variable cost. Same thing, I go left to right, top to bottom, plug in 19530 for accounting break-even quantity, fixed cost of $237,000, uh, depreciation of $138,900 over um, P of 92 minus V, which is X. So I'm just going to put in X for variable cost, and if I solve for that X, I get a variable cost of $72.75 per unit. And there are your answers to problem 1.8.